Why do some breast implants migrate over time? Let's talk about it. So I like to think of it as different forces that are on your implant that are either pushing or pulling that implant around. And then what other forces are there to counter those forces? And that's the balance that you have that keeps your implant in a relatively stable position or not. So implants, just think of them as what they are. They're objects that have mass. And because they have mass, uh, when gravity works on that mass, uh, it will try and pull that implant or that mass wherever it can. And we have to think about that implant as sitting on the tabletop that you have. What do I mean by that? And this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, I think it's kind of the most underappreciated factor in breast implant surgery today is actually the shape of your skeleton, right? Actually your bony foundation, because that's ultimately what the implant's going to be sitting on ultimately. So let's talk about that. If a patient has a relatively flat front of their chest wall where it meets their breastbone, which is gonna be my thumbs here, then the implants themselves are sitting on a relatively flat tabletop. Well, this is good because then you can see gravity's just pulling the implants uh, against the tabletop and you have relatively narrow cleavage, right? Now let's take a look at someone who is rib cage kind of curves a little uh, early, okay? Or their breastbone is a little prominent and the ribs come out to meet the breastbone. And you can see by doing that now, I have a pre-built-in gap between my implants and the implants want to slide down the ramp. And depending on how aggressive that slope is, the implants can do it uh, pretty quickly, right? Let's look at something else what you also may find interesting. So we're gonna take the flat chest here and when this person is to stand up, you can see that the gap stays about the same and the breasts just kind of fall directly down towards the feet, right? But the gap stays about the same. And this is how this person's breasts would probably age even without implants, right? Keeping their gap about the same. Now let's take this example of the curved chest, right? Already we have a little bit of a built-in gap. Now, when this person stands up, the breasts and or the implants, depends on what you got, um, they tend to go down and out, right? And you can see right away that the gap actually gets wider between the implants and they start to separate more. And so just like the breasts can do this, so can the implants. And I try to take this into account when I'm, I'm looking at someone for their first set of implants, or I'm looking at them for a revision case because their implants have already migrated. So if your chest wall, the ribs specifically, are relatively flat where they meet your, your sternum, uh, then that's better for long-term implant stability, in my opinion, uh, versus more of a raked angle for your rib cage. Uh, which may set you up uh, for early migration. So another force that's on your implant besides just gravity could also be your muscle. And this depends on if your implant's above the muscle or below the muscle. And that's a critical distinction for you. So we're gonna go back to the rib cage. So let's say our implant is uh, underneath your muscle in some capacity, okay, whether that's retropectoral or completely behind your pectoralis major muscle, or if it's actually a dual plane pocket. Okay, and I have a separate video to talk about those things. Either way, there's gonna be some muscle sitting on top or uh, across your implant on the outside, and muscle has resting tone, right? Um, and then we're able to contract it and it shortens, and then we'll try and put pressure on your implant, okay? If we have a relatively flat tabletop, then that um, is kind of countered a little bit. But if you have an angled rib cage, right, where your implant's already sitting on a slide, then if you contract your muscle, there's a force pushing the implant down the ramp, okay? And so patients like this, they have to be even more cautious about using their pectoralis muscle over time and what I mean by that is weightlifting, specifically targeting your pectoralis muscle, even some uh, heavy back lifts where you have to stabilize your shoulder in its socket 
um, that's another one. So those patients have to be very careful with what they choose to do as far as weightlifting uh, and physical activities over time because that might be also pushing the implant down the ramp. So not everything is bad news here uh, because we also have some counter forces that work against the gravity and your muscle activity. And those are your scar tissue that forms around the implant and that's called the capsule. I think that's the main determinant. And two, uh, we can have soft tissue, uh, skin and breast tissue also has some elasticity to resist that movement. And then uh, three, we have some activities and restrictions that we can implement ourselves, right? So if the support on the inside is not very good, then we can add support on the outside, right? And that would be like a bra to support the weight of that implant and to counter the force of, of your muscle contracting. This is really important because sometimes patients get the wrong idea as far as where they need their support. And we kind of focus, overly focus on the support at the bottom. But even more critically, I think, we need support on the side. And this sometimes entails more of a underwire like bra. So either with a physical wire or just reinforced fabric that goes up the side that helps to support that implant from sliding down the ramp. And finally, I also believe there's a material sciences question here on how different implants may migrate over time. And I think there are certain types of implants that are more prone to early migration versus other types of implants. And here we're talking about saline, silicone, and the different versions of the silicone. And so if you want a more detailed discussion on this topic, uh, feel free to reach out to us, schedule an appointment with me, and we'll talk about it.